Isn't God good? All the time. All the time. God is good. Now I'm expecting about a hundred more people. If they come in, just slide in and let them come in. Amen. Amen. Hey, just remember this too. If you'll notice, the more people we get, the lower the music is. And sometimes music doesn't seem very loud because if we don't have as many people, we have full sound. Everybody has full sound. So the less people got, it's kind of hard to adjust because as people start coming in, they're going to turn it up. So it's adjust for about a lot more we got right now. So, so just praise God. Amen. 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 Folks on the store. I mean, all those things on Jesus, not on the store. I don't know if y'all watched this yesterday. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Matter of fact, my sermon's been changed today. I got changed this far I got here. What I was watching, I, I was watching the cowboy movie, working on my sermon, and I turned to the trunk rally, and when I saw, I saw, I heard the shots, and I saw him grab his ear and go down, I said, that has been an assassination attempt. Couldn't believe what I was seeing. <clears throat> and then when he stood up and did this, I said, wow, if God ain't in him to be a protected dog and all this, and just took out a top of his ear. But today, today, just remember, all of this is much bigger than politics. It's not by accident. It is not by accident that we're talking about spiritual warfare. Because <clears throat> spiritual warfare is rampant right now. And there's this one happened yesterday is much bigger than politics. We are in crisis as a nation. Y'all know that? We are in crisis as a nation. We need God to intervene. So no matter our political viewpoint, let us join together. And we're going to seek God, okay? And so that's going to be a little bit later on in the sermon. That's what's coming. So know that. Also, we need to pray. Of course, there's a lot of people who are called by my name shall hold themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from the heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will hear their will their man. Now, let's, let's pray for Israel. <laughs> Psalm 17, 7 and 9. Show how wonderful is your grace. Save your those who seek at your right hand. Refuge from their foes, protect them like the pupil of your eye, hide them in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are selling them, from their deadly enemies who are all around them. Can everybody say amen? Amen. 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 And amen. All right. The church, I'll say this to me. The church is not an audience to be entertained. It is an army to be trained and empowered. Amen? Amen. Get on that hand clap. <laughs> These are the two most important hours of all week to help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship and not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship, O Lord. Remember, worship is an act of war against the enemies of your heart. Amen. Get them all. Get them all. We get ready, we get ready to fire you up, bro. Amen. 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 Amen.
thing God make a way for you with a Muslim way. Oh, yeah. Come on, how, how many is that cost? Keep on standing up, keep on standing up. How many? Yeah. How many of you think God make a way for you when there was no way? Yeah. Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. God's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, make a way. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's time now to receive our time to offer. Let's go ahead and, and go ahead and repeat this prayer with me. See if it's over there. Oh, there we go. Don't repeat this prayer. Put your offering in your hand. If you haven't already put it up there, Put it in your hand. If you've already put it out there, then just hold your hand up. I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O Lord. This is my seed. Although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply. Except my seed, O Lord. Give Lord a hand clap. Praise the Lord, saints. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Does anybody have an outspoken request this morning? I'm lifting hands, special needs, all the loved ones. Let's go to the room right now. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the time and opportunity we have to be in your house this day, Lord God. And as we gather together in one mind and one accord, we ask that your presence will be here delivering, Lord God. You heard the request, you see the needs this morning, Lord God. Supply according to your intellect, Lord, that testimony would be given of your goodness and grace. And Father, we thank you for everything that's said and done in this house this morning. Father, we just ask that you would reach down in a powerful way. Make your presence known, Lord God. We depart while we give testimony that we've been in the presence of God. Lord, touch, touch your pastors. He brings forth your word this morning, Lord God, and prepare our hearts to receive the message that you have prepared for us. So, Father, we'll thank you for everything this day. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.
parable in this world. We're talking about spiritual warfare. And part of spiritual warfare is us singing unto God. That is spiritual warfare. Go ahead and sit and sing. Let's go ahead and sing again. And the chorus too. yesterday when they saw I'm telling you it was a, it was it was divine a divine appointment and divine shield that kept Donald Trump from being shot in the head he was just if he moved up a quarter inch he would have took his head out and we've been talking about his death today so I'm telling you there's something going on there's something stirring in this last day and we got to be ready for it I would like to preach a bear and air child, sir. I like to preach well if I can just bring you all up and hug you and love on you and say everything's going to be all right. But this morning, as I was working, I've been working for two days strong on this Bible, spiritual warfare and, and willful ignorance. And the Lord this morning got me. And I wish he'd have got me yesterday, but he got me this morning. And I wish he'd have got me before I was getting ready to leave for church. But I think what he wanted was me to stay out of the way. He wanted me to just get out of the way so he could do something this morning. So instead of a there, there sermon, I want to preach here we are sermon, okay? Here it is. Y'all say this with me. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven that I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Our land has never needed a healing today. Our land needs a healing. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for all that you do for us, God. I thank you, God, that you got everything under control. Lord, I thank you, God, that, that your body was broken for healing of this land. And I thank you, Lord, that your body was broken for healing of us. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch, Father, all of us, God, and help us, Lord, to know what you're saying in this final hours, Lord, before you come back. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. 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 Now, now, of course, if my people... We're called by the name. Uh, who are called by his name? We are called by his name. We proclaim to be, I'm to tell you, be children of God and, and we belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. If they'll humble themselves, pray and seek, and they turn from the wicked ways, this is a promise. Then I will hear and I'll forgive and I'll heal. So, so real quick, I, I said it's going to be quickly. I, did, I just jotted this down. So I'm going to sit right here and, and, and mess around with what I jotted down. God is so good. Let somebody say, God is so, God is so good. good. So good. How many know that God encourages humility? Amen. 
God encourages prayer. God encourages us to seek His presence. Doesn't matter if you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, claim no affiliation. This is not about who's right, who's wrong, because I promise you, the Republicans are not all right, and they're not all wrong. The Democrats are not all right, and they're not all wrong, because we're all human. Amen. And God said, the problem now is, y'all got too human on me. Amen. Amen. Come on. That's right. Some of you are having problems in your own right now because you got too human on God. God says, you got to trust me. you got to seek me. you got to know that I got you. Charles Burgess says, prayer moves the arm that moves the world. Wow. Prayer moves the arm that moves the world. This verse here is a promise and it's a hope and it invites us, number one, to humble ourselves before the Creator. Not saying to say, well, I'm right there wrong. Blah, 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 blah. Stop it. Just stop it. They know who's right and who's wrong. God is right and we need Him. Okay? Simple. God is right. If we seek Him, the rest of it will fall into place. Because I promise you, out of every one of us in here, none of us will agree on everything, every time. Amen? So, so <clears throat> He tells us to humble Himself and to pray. Now, now, if the church has ever needed revival, it's now. We need God's, a restoration of God's sovereignty, not only in our lives, but in our church, and in our country, God's sovereignty. But they're pushing God as far away as they can push Him, and the farther they push Him away, the worse it is. So how do we get God's sovereignty back with us? How, how do we become somebody that can be humble before God, can pray before God, and see things happen? How can we release uh, 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 His fullness of blessing in our life? How can we see Him do this? <coughs> we got to trust, and we've got to let God be God. First off, you've got to recognize there's a need for revival. Look around you. As you look around you, I want you to look within. Get ready. Everybody close your eyes. Have you noticed a certain spiritual dryness that pervades our society? Have you noticed the personal, I mean, a, a, a spiritual dryness that is even a personal problem? I'm dried up. I'm dried up. I'm trying up. I'm working up. I, I, I've been all I can, God. Uh, uh, just dry. What we need to be is as we're sitting, after walking through the desert, thirsting for more water, is to feel that same way about God. God, I got to have you. I gotta have something deeper. God, I gotta have you. You can open your eyes out. I gotta have you, God. More than ever. Our country is divided more than it's ever been. There's people celebrating that Biden is having health problems. There's people celebrating that Trump was I had an assassination attempt. We should not be celebrating either one of them. We should be praying for both of them. Amen. Amen. Because in the end, one of them is going to wind up being our president, and whoever's our president, we want them to do the best they can. So we better be praying for both of them. Amen. 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 So, so, a revival is not just a series of meetings, but it's a movement of the Holy Spirit bringing a fresh outpouring of God's presence and God's anointing and God's power. And we need it now more than ever. We need it in a very profound way. So, so what's the first first sign that there's a sense of spiritual drive? So I'm going to go ahead and help you out here. If you check in these boxes, oh, don't worry about other people beside you. This is your box. Just have three boxes, four imaginary boxes in your head. <laughs> Guys, that's pretty easy. We can compartmentalize. Ladies, really try hard four boxes in your head. The first sign of spiritual dryness is we're just going through the motions. No passion. No faith. When we pray, we feel it's empty. 
Our worship feels hollow. We're just like the Israelites in the deserts. So number one, we're just going through the motions. If you check that box, you ain't got to raise your hand. Just check it. And hold on to it. <laughs> Second sign is the lack of spiritual growth. We're attending church regularly. We're reading our Bibles. We're praying. I promise you, I'm preaching the Word. You're getting the Word. But the problem is so many times we get oversaturated with the Word because we are not growing because we're not using what we're hearing. And we're not using what we're hearing. If I eat a steak today, if it didn't digest, I couldn't eat another steak tonight and another steak the next day because I would be blown up. I gotta digest it and I gotta let it do its thing. And if you hear the word of God every week and you put that in your Bible and never touch it again till next Sunday and never read it again and never even try to do what you heard, it's like eating a steak and nothing working is stuck. And you eat another steak and it's stuck and another steak and it's stuck. And then you get to church and you're going, oh, I can't take anything out of my pop so full. <laughs> we got to start digesting what we're hearing and start growing and experiencing transformation in our life. Number three sign of a lack of, of drivers is there's a lack of spiritual growth, there's a lack of spiritual power. We might be out doing all the right things, but are we seeing results? I, I, was, in, I was in food line the other day and I noticed a schoolmate. <laughs> the schoolmate had been a pretty hefty person and the schoolmate came up to me and she had lost 50, 60, 70 pounds and I didn't want to say anything, but she looked sick. I want to say, hey, are you sick? She said, pray for me. That was her first challenge. Not mistake, challenge. She said, pray for me, brother. I said, why? She said, I lost 60, 70 pounds. <coughs> I got this problem up here and right here. <coughs> My digestive system. And if God don't touch me, and I said, Right about the freezer steps. I said, put your fingers out. She put her fingers out and said, this is anointing oil. It's a ball, but it's an oil. And I did that, and I said, put your hand out. And I did that, and I said, don't you lay it where it's hurt. And she laid her hand where it was hurt. And she closed her eyes, didn't realize that I was going to do my finger too. And get her right here. So here we are, people walking through the freezer section. And she's holding her hand right here. And all of a sudden, I go, a little cross and I do like that and she goes, oh! <laughs> and I said, Lord, touch this woman right now. She needs prayer and I don't want to forget about it when I get out the park and I touch her right now. And it's amazing because she's been, whoa, I felt that she's by. <laughs> Just in case I got another, another, yeah. in case I was going to pray for her, she would be out of there. Amen. We're doing the right things. Do you feel like your prayers go unanswered? Do you feel like the gospel goes on their fears? And number four, the fourth sign that you're dry is the lack of spiritual fruit. We're all busy with so many things religious, religious activities, and doing it for others, but are we producing fruit? And the fruit is, of course, uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in all areas of our life. If you check one, two, three, or four of those boxes, I hate to be the bearer of some rough news, not bad news, rough news. You're dry. But the good news is God is ready and God is willing to bring revival. He's ready to apply it in the spirit of fresh, in a, a fresh anointing in a fresh and powerful way. He's ready to bring up a, a spirit of renewal and refreshment to our dry and weary souls. He brings growth and transformation. He wants to. He wants you to have power more than you want it. He wants you to be powerful more than you want to be powerful. But revival doesn't just happen. It requires a response for us. It requires us to humble ourselves and we pray. And we seek God's face. So, let's see. The Synchronous 7.14 provides the blueprint for this restoration. 
Number one, it begins with a call to humility. Humility is not a sign of weakness, but it's a recognition of our place in the grand scheme of things. I remember, man, I remember, D.C., <coughs> we're at farm school in Johnston County. D.C. was a great big fish in a little bitty pond playing football. I mean, monster knew everybody. And he was just running over everybody like crazy. And then he went to South Johnston High School, 4A school. And I went out to pick him up from practice one day, and I said, man, these guys are I'm looking all around. I'm trying to find D.C.'s number. I'm looking all around, and I'm finally, I was looking right here at everybody's numbers, see D.C.'s number. Then finally I had to go down one to see D.C.'s number. Because now he was a little fish in a big pond. Some of us walk around here like we a big fish in a little pond. God don't like that. I'm one beggar to another beggar. We're fine for it. God wants us to humble ourselves. Humility is not weakness. Humility is strength under control. We have to acknowledge that we're not a center of the universe, but rather we're just part of a larger system that God's got going on. So, so first off, we've got to humble ourselves. And that's a, sometimes that can be a hard thing to do. Yeah. Then we've got to pray. Pray not simply asking God what we want. You know, before I leave to go to the store, I say, I say, tell me what's that. Honey, how about mark on that list what you want? And she'll mark it. And when I get back home, she said, did you get all of my list? And I go, I forgot or they were out or something. She goes, oh, man, I, that is not what I needed. I needed that list. Sometimes we do that with God. We give him my list. Here's what I want. Get it, buddy. Get it. <laughs> you tell him, bro. We give God our list. And when he don't answer our list, have you ever been to Walmart or the food line and seen the people doing the shopping for people that called it in and they push these big things around and picking them up and sticking them in a box and picking them up and sticking them in a box and they're filling out groceries for everybody else that's going to come outside and pick it up? I promise you, God's not up in heaven. Got angels with that little bit of box of pushing the cart and grabbing stuff. This is what prayer is. Ready? It means that we align our will with His. One more time. It means that we align our will with His. We seek His guidance and wisdom in all things. When we pray, I'm not trying to change my, God's mind. I'm trying to align my mind with His. Show me, God. Show me what you want me to do. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He's got it in heaven, but He's using us to do it in earth. So, the interpreting with the ways. Sometimes we, we misunderstand that word wicked. But think about that word wicked is around with drugs and alcohol running running wild and crazy. No. No. All that's part of it. No. 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 Wicked ways means to do it our way. To do it as when you see God's word and God shows you and God tells you, then you say, Wow, I got a better way, God. Just know that's part of those wicked ways. Because you say you've got a better idea than God's got. I promise you, you don't. And this can be the most difficult step of all. Because it requires us to acknowledge our sin, acknowledge our shortcomings, and to not acknowledge our hard-headedness. God talks about hard-hearted. Well, we're not coming from that hard-hearted. Actually, we call it, Mama called it hard-headed. If we turn from our good ways, we pray. He said he will heal our land. That word is not just that. That, that word uh, is Rapha. It means in Exodus 15, 26, God declared himself as Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. 
Psalm 147 to 3, the psalmist declares that God heals the broken heart and binds up their wounds. Wrong. Here it says, I will heal their land. Wrong. That means, listen, to heal physically, spiritually, and emotionally. If you take pleasure and see neither one of our presidential candidates fall because of health or because of a bullet, you need to be asking God to heal you by something wrong. God, touch us, heal us spiritually, emotionally, physically. Politically, heal us. This is not a passive process. We got to humble ourselves, pray, seek God's face, and turn from our wicked ways. And that is not an easy, easy process. But once you do this, you release the fullest blessing in your life. Humility and pure form of surrender. Just surrender. God, I surrender. God, I surrender to you. It's yours. It's all yours anyway. I surrender my need to be in control. Oh, come on now. Amen. I surrender my need to be in control. I surrender my need to have all the answers. Here comes a hard one. I surrender my need to be all right. Mm. Ouch. I surrender my need to be seen. I surrender my need to be recognized. I surrender my need to be admired. God, you see what's happening in this land. In order for you to heal it, you're going to use us to be the practitioners. I guarantee you, if somebody was to have a problem today somewhere, and you called 911. They would send what you needed. They'd send the police, the deputies. They would send the EMS to take care of your need. Because you really need to be helped at the hospital or at the jail or at the sheriff's office, but you can't get there, so they come to you and they bring you there. The world will be a lot better if they were in here but they're not. So like the EMS, and like the deputies, and like the police, we got to go out and get them and bring them in. And when we do, it's amazing. So now, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's actually thinking of yourself less. A prayer, conversation with God. And let's not forget that God's love for us is unchanging. And it's everlasting. He's always here. He always is ready to listen when we call him one. He's ready to forgive us when we confess our sins. He's always there. He's ready to heal when we turn from our wicked ways. His love for us is so great that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die that we can have eternal. Right now, you can either come up here or stay at your seat. But I want us all, either up here or at your seat, I want you to make an altar. Put your head on the back of the pew or put your head up here. Either way, it's fine. Whatever's comfortable for you because we're going to pray. Right now, everybody, put your head down. Either up here on this altar or at your seat, that pew in front of you. Put your head down and put your hand up. The whole problem in coming to church is so many times we're putting our hand out. It's time to put our hands out and start putting our hands up. God, I'm not here to get. I'm here for you to touch. You gave us a promise. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear and I will forgive them, and I will heal their land. 
Pray as you feel like God's telling you to pray, but I'm going to give you give a prayer while you're doing this. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Almighty God, thank you for your unfailing love. Thank you for your endless mercy. Thank you for hearing us when we pray, for forgiving, for forgiving us when we confess our sins, for healing us when we turn from our wicked ways. As we leave here today, help us to keep our hearts humble, our spirits prayerful, and our lives centered on you. In Jesus Christ we pray. And Father, I thank you, Lord, in this crazy, crazy time for hearing us, healing us, and healing this land. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you, God, that we're not in this by ourselves. We thank you, God, that you got us, Lord. We thank you, God, that we're not all alone, God, but you're here with us. And I ask you, God, to touch in a very, 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 very powerful way. I thank you for your healing touch. I thank you for your power and your anointing. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Touch us. Kill us. Inhabit us. Let us be your spirit and your power once again. Let us be part of the connection to heal this land. In the name of Jesus. Help us, God, not stir up Satan's fire, but help us to stir your fire. As your fire stirs in us, help us to stir it, your fire outside. In the name of Jesus. You're a powerful God. You're an awesome God. You got this. You got it. You got it. You got it. We don't. You got it, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, magnificent one. God, I humble myself before you. I can't do anything without you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. You're all powerful. You've got it all. Lord, in the name of Jesus, heal this land. Heal this land. Touch both of our presidential candidates. Touch them too, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And Lord, help us to quit bickering and complaining, but instead help us to reach out in a very powerful way. Touch our Congress. The bickering's got to stop. They need to pull together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And let us want to put you back in our land, in our schools. Thank you, God. We see it happen. Keep on, keep on, keep on. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We thank you for healing us. We thank you, church. Thank you, Lord. Power praise. So power praise. Power praise. Go on and heal. We thank you for healing us. We thank you for healing us. Power praise. Crazy praise. Yeah. Next week we're going right back to spiritual warfare. Although today was spiritual warfare from a different kind of way. Next week we're going to go back. We got two more, two more sermons on the doors, and then it won't be long. We'll start doing the armor. God is so good to us. God is so so good to us. Y'all love God. Amen. Are you ready for God to move in our life? Are you ready for the dryness to be gone? Yes. Are you ready to see things happen? Yes. Are you ready to see God heal our land? Yes. Just remember, just like the guys in here that are EMS and 
and love of horsemen. Your God's EMS. Go out there. Help. Help me. Bring him in. And remember this. If you just bring one person, just one person next week, the church does. Just one person. Two person. The church does. You. Not everybody else. You. One person. One wins one. And then if they keep on for a long week, we ain't going to have a place to sit. And I promise you, the land will start being healed. Yeah. Amen? The land will start being healed. I know this was not what everybody was expecting. I wasn't expecting it either. And I told Linda when I was leaving, I said, oh, she said, what's wrong? I said, God just changed my sermon. She said, but you've been working on another so long. I said, yeah. And she said, well, you trust him, don't you? I said, yeah. She said, then go for it. God is so lost. God is so lost. I want to pray a special prayer, and then we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll dismiss the prayer. Father, we've come before you today. We have humbled ourselves. We have prayed and sought your face. And Lord, we thank you, God, for hearing us and forgiving us. <clears throat> And healing us and healing our land. I ask you, Lord, to touch both sides, Republicans and Democrats, but touch them. Touch both presidential candidates. Lord, this is a free nation. A free nation. Let's stop this crazy rhetoric and just let the process work. And we thank you for it. Lord, you're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. You told us these days were coming, and here they are. But I'm reminded of what my mama used to tell me. When I, she said, why'd you do that? And I said, because everybody else was doing it. She said, so if they were all jumping off the cliff, would you jump off the cliff? And I said, no, Mom. Father, help us to realize no matter who around us is doing what, we don't have to do that. We need to be healers of the land. And we thank you for it. Healers of the land. And we thank you for it. Touch, especially right now, I ask you, Lord, to touch Tr President Trump and that gun shot him. I thank you for that. I thank you for all that you're doing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Brother Wayne, we should dismiss us in prayer or not after this Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy kingdom, power, and glory. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to come to the house today, Lord. Father, we come to today asking we pray for our nation. We pray that you'll come quick, Lord. Pray that you want to be, keep us all safe, Lord, and bless the United States of America, Lord, because it's your country. Mm. Listen, all things, ask in your holy name. Amen. 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 Amen.